Hi, I'm Wes, the sewing machine repair guy, and I know how confusing it is when all the different types of options of sewing machines are being thrown at you left and right, and you have to make a decision on what sewing machine you're going to buy to use for the next however many years. Today we're going to take some of that confusion out of your search. If you want to learn the difference between computerized and mechanical machines, well today is a show for you. If you don't know the difference, then you might end up buying an expensive machine that doesn't meet your needs. When you spend $200 up to $1,000 and even more on a brand new sewing machine, you need to make sure you got what you wanted to get. During this video, I'm going to be referring to all the computerized machines as digital and all the mechanical machines as analog. So first of all, how do I tell if a machine is analog or digital? When looking at a digital machine, it's usually going to have some sort of display to show you what stitch is selected and the different options. An analog machine will have a big dial on it that you select the stitch with. So in order to find out what the difference is between the two, we're first going to have to have a basic understanding of how each type of machine works. So what I'm going to do is we're going to go outside and we're going to go into the car and take a look at a manual transmission and see how that is similar to an analog machine. Driving a manual car requires you to move a lever, which is mechanically connected to the transmission and it selects the gear based on where this lever is. If you select the wrong gear, then the car is going to try and go in that gear and it may stall the engine. If your transmission has a problem, it's still going to try and drive the car until it destroys itself because there is no automatic safety feature for this transmission. Let's look at the inside of an analog machine. You see the lack of any circuit boards and lots of mechanical linkages that operate this machine. The motor makes the needle go up and down and also turns the hook in order to make a stitch. There's also a cam that is turned by the motor which controls the side to side motion of the needle to give you different types of stitches. These are similar to the gears of a manual transmission in a car. You select the stitch with the knob and the linkage changes the cam that is selected. The motor speed is controlled by the foot pedal alone and has no automatic speed control. It uses a motor that runs off the household AC voltage and is controlled by a rheostat that changes the amount of current flowing through the motor. If something is wrong with this machine, it's going to continue to try to sew as long as you press that pedal until you notice something wrong and stop it yourself. So what are the pros of having an analog machine? Why would I want one of these? An analog machine is generally cheaper than a comparable digital machine. An analog machine can be more heavy duty than a comparable digital machine. When you have a problem, this machine is just going to keep going. It's not going to stop. So is that a pro? Is it a con? It's kind of, you have a little tiny fault that causes that digital machine to quit working. Whereas your analog machine will keep going. Uh, it might be nice to have that analog machine that keeps going and then maybe we'll let you know because you hear a sound or something, you know you got to fix it. So longevity. How long a sewing machine lasts is going to be limited by the weakest component in that sewing machine. Mechanical sewing machines have a lot less components overall than the uh, digital sewing machines. So I expect that the, these analog or mechanical machines are going to last longer than your digital machines because digital machines have a ton more parts inside of them. So why wouldn't you want to buy an analog machine? The cons. Limited number of stitches. So it's, there's a limit to how many stitches that they can put in, a, in this machine because we, as we saw earlier with those cams rotating, you can only fit so many of those cams inside the cage of this machine. There are no creature comforts for this sewing machine. You notice I stopped it and it stopped somewhere in the middle. It wasn't all the way down, it wasn't all the way up. So a digital machine will stop either all the way up or all the way down depending on how you set it. That's one of those creature comforts and we'll see that a little bit later. You also don't have thread cutters on these, not automatic thread cutters. And all those other bells and whistles that make it really nice, you don't find on an analog machine. In an analog machine, there are a bunch of mechanical adjustments and each one of those could get, go a little bit off and cause your stitches to not be consistent 
on an analog machine. So it's not to say that all analog machines are not as consistent as digital, but what I am saying is there's more opportunity for over time for your stitches to um, be a little bit different from stitch to stitch because you could have some play or some slop in some of these adjustments that you make on the sewing machine. And now it's time to talk about digital machines. In a car with an automatic transmission, all you do is select D for drive and the car's computer is gonna automatically select the correct gear for the speed that you're going. In this type of car, if there's a problem with the transmission, the car is gonna let you know because the computer is gonna detect that problem and it's going to put your car into a limp mode or may uh, stop going altogether because it's trying to protect you from causing further damage to that transmission. So the major difference between this car and the manual transmission is that the computer is what's controlling everything that you're doing. You're just telling it where you wanna be and the computer takes care of everything else. Here's the inside of a digital machine. You won't find any cams. The needle side to side motion is controlled by a special type of motor called a stepper motor. They allow for very precise control of the needle position. These stepper motors can also control feed dog position among other things. Just like the automatic transmission in your car, you select the stitch you want and the computer chooses the appropriate position of the needle to make it happen. There are usually some mechanically controlled features like the needle and hook operation, as well as feed dog operation, depending on the, the type of digital sewing machine. But the motor is still controlled differently in a digital machine. The motor control is very different on a digital machine. The pedal tells the computer how fast you want the machine to go. Then the computer creates its own voltage and precisely controls the amount of power to the DC motor via electronic components. This makes for a very consistent speed and properly rated current flow through the motor. The computer in a digital machine monitors many variables and ensures everything is perfect at all times. If anything is not perfect, then it will cause a code and stop working. Anything wrong will stop the machine from operating. Then you can throw that machine in the trash because it will cost too much to repair. Just kidding. Check your manual to see what the code means. And then I've got a few codes for one of the brother types of machines up here on the screen. What are the pros of a digital machine? Well, these machines have a wide variety of special stitches due to the nature of their construction. They have consistent stitches, a digital machine stitch is always the same. Typically less moving parts requiring adjustments, more speed control, lots of special features and creature comforts like auto needle threading, auto lock stitch, thread cutting, auto needle up and down, auto tension adjust, etc. Cons of a digital machine. A digital machine is generally more expensive than a comparable analog machine. It also has many components that could stop the machine from working. There are thousands of components inside this digital machine, and if any one of them quits working, your machine could stop. And we looked at those fault codes earlier, but it'll stop on a fault, no matter how small the fault. In fact, when I was trying to get this machine to operate without the covers on, it didn't want to operate because there was no bobbin installed. I personally don't feel that these digital machines will last as long as the analog machines because digital components don't last as long as mechanical components. But I will say that there are still some of those Touchtronic 2001s around from 1970s that are still working, so who knows, maybe digital machines can last longer. We'll see. We've learned a lot today, but I still haven't told you what my preferred machine is to use. Well, I'm not going to, because it depends. Sometimes you just need Old Faithful to work all day long and just go through some thick fabric and just keep working and don't and not stop. Sometimes you wanna make designs and a multitude of different types of stitches to beautify a garment. Or maybe you want the machine to have bells and whistles when you're operating it. Maybe you like it when every time you stop sewing the needle stays up. Or maybe you want it every time you stop sewing for the needle to stay down. Maybe you like to use the uh, auto thread cutter. Maybe you like the auto threading where it will thread the machine for you. 
Those are questions that only you can answer, because what works for me may not work for you. But even more, I hope you have a deeper understanding of the machine that you use on a daily basis. Because I'll tell you what, I really love knowing how all the things work that I use on a daily basis. That well, was my goal today for you to have a better understanding of the different types of sewing machines that are out there so that you can make an informed decision the next time you're shopping for a sewing machine. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you'd like to help support me so I can make more videos like this for you, uh, please take a look at the description. I have things like Patreon and some Amazon affiliate links that you can help support the channel just by buying things on Amazon that you would have normally bought before. Thank you very much. Thanks for watching.